Hey everybody, Andy here, Thursday, April 29th. Great to be here with you, live office hours, helping you build a career you love. Thank you for celebrating the holiday with me today. Great to see everybody. I see the chat's rolling already. Mom is here, Mike Rose is here, Dana's here, Nirmai, John Marks, Bob Ashby. I love this time of week. Oh, Adam Stark from the other side of the pond is here too. We're rolling with your questions today. Let's get right into them. I got a few announcements. Uh, I got a few announcements, but I'm going to uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold those till about midway through the uh, the uh, the session. So, uh, Kara, just so you know, I have uh, I think I have uh, my mom. My mom is actually starting the chat first online, which is how it should be. Uh, but I know that Mike Rose snuck in and uh, has a question here. And Mike Rose, great to see you, buddy. Hope things are going well. Let's get you, let's get you tidied up here. Talking with an AVP about an opening in her area uh, brought up another opportunity that I and another candidate are at the decision process from the interviewing director. I'm assuming that you mean it's down to you and, a, and another candidate. The decision has been delayed by a week. My guess offered to the other guy and waiting to see if accepted. Do I contact the director boss AVP about the first opportunity saying I'm really interested in working with them and the company? I say yes. I say yes too. All right, so don't go too over the top here. I, if it's me, this is how I would play this. And I think you have another, wait, you got another remark here. Hold on before I jump into this. Interview with AVP for job. Mentioned my interest in second job. AV, AVP sent me to manager for interviews. Opening number two will know on Friday. If hired, I want to work for this company. Can I inquire with the AVP about the first job? Okay, I'm a little lost with who's running what, but, but, but this will get you where you need to go. If I'm interviewing, let's genericize this a little bit. If I'm interviewing for two uh, positions within a company and I like them both and what I always tell you, you join a company, you don't join a job. Just get your butt in there, okay? One or the other, yeah, I'm sure you have a preference, but I would just say, hey, look, I'm all, I'm all about getting in your organization, and I, like, this is me, I have faith that whatever's supposed to happen will work out. So if, if, we, if you're down to me and another person, it, you feel that person's better fit, that's great. That person doesn't take it, I'm all in. Okay, but but if, if that doesn't hash out, then I'm happy to work in this area here again be, over here because as I as I mentioned, I'm more interested in getting in your organization, and I'm so confident in my ability to prove myself, and I have faith in your ability to reward the folks that do well. Let's just get it. Let let's get in and get going. However that may be. So wherever you think I can add the most value, wherever you feel I would be the best fit based on these choices, based on the circumstances, based on the other players involved, let's go. That's it. I wouldn't even like you may not feel that exactly, but that's what I would say exactly. Because that is at the end of the day what matters the most is you getting the opportunity if you decide later a week two down the road that, hey, I really wanted that other opportunity. Now here again, you might have other external factors. You might have other companies you're interviewing with and you might like those companies and roles better. Maybe, you know, maybe that just didn't come to fruition. My point is, that's how I would say it. That's how I would approach it. And I wouldn't keep checking in with them. I would just communicate that live. I would not send them an email. I would try to, to call them. And if, if, uh, if I was able to speak with them live, that's how I'd communicate it. If I actually uh, did, did, got the voicemail, uh, I probably would leave the voicemail. And I would try to keep the voicemail tight, but just say, hey, I wanted to catch up with you and, uh, directly, and I didn't want to email this because I really want to express my sentiment and make sure it's coming through clearly, that I want to work for your organization in either capacity and so on. And you could you know, you could let them hash it out. Mike, that's how I would go with that, buddy. I hope, uh, I hope that helps. Hope things in FLA are going well. And, uh, and, and let me know how it turns out. All right, let's see. What do we got next? Did we go to, is, is, was my mom next? Good morning, Andy. I'm here. Love and miss you. Love and miss you too, mom. I will, uh, we'll see you soon. And, uh, can I get it? Can I get a Heidi high from everybody? Are you guys feeling good these days? I, I, I just, I'm just feeling great about, about things. I'm feeling great about the job market. I'm feeling great about, you know, I, it's sort of sunny out. It was really kind of dark before. It was really raining and now it's sunny, but generally it's April and this happens. So 
I just feel good. I feel good. And I love being here with you guys. If you love being here with me, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Share it. We got a whole hour or so of this stuff. All right. Yes, mom was next. Okay. Then I'm seeing, I guess I'm seeing Adam. Adam. Get, wait, Gary McNeil, boot camper, Team Calgary. Great to have you. A lot of Canadian friends out there. And uh, Andy, you are a true superhero of the job search. Thank you, my friend. And I love those emojis too. And great to have you in the boot camp and, and just love, love having you in the programs. And I appreciate you showing up here uh, each week and, and your attention and, and, all, and to all of you as well. All right, Adam Stark, great to see you. I am doing well. And Dana, oh, Dana, DFP79, you're pro Dana, I rode this morning and it was a measly hour ride, although it, it was quite exhausting because I was laddering up and down like crazy. Uh, but great to see you, boot camper. Good morning, Andy, Karen, Stacy, and everyone else. If you haven't joined the program, and she's talking about my job search coaching program, which you endearingly know as the boot camp, uh, do it. Do not wait. Andy's advice is direct and to the point, and he always answers your questions. I, I sure do. I go for a hundred percent response rate uh, in in my programs in in the system, and and I try to do it at the at the premium coaching program uh, coaching sessions too. Mm. All right. So appreciate that. And Danny, you know I love you, and I'm guessing you're sweating and on the bike right now. All right. There's a job opening. A fellow alum works there. We are not connected. Did the boss hunting to the CEO, smaller company, didn't open. He didn't open it or she didn't open it, I'm assuming. Should I email the alum or a LinkedIn message? And should I mention the job opening? So here's, I want to, I want, I, I see you have another one. And then boss hunting CEO at a smaller company, auto response. Okay, wait. So I think that's okay. You got two questions. Let's, let's answer one at a time. And uh, Dana, I, 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 I'm hoping that you are looking at the new version 1.0 of the Boss Hunting Bible that I sent you last this past week, a couple days ago, to you and the folks in the Job Search Boot Camp. Um, there is an opening. Fellow alum works there. They're not connected. Boss hunted the CEO. It's a smaller company. CEO didn't open it. Should I email the alum or LinkedIn message? So here's what I would have done. If I would have seen all of this and I hadn't taken step one yet, I would have gone to the alum and I would have used the message, uh, you know, such as, hey, so-and-so, I noticed you're an alum of blah, blah, and you also work at small company XYZ. The reason I'm reaching out to you is because uh, through my job search, I uh, discovered your organization and, and was wondering about applying there. And before I did that, um, I noticed you were working there and I always like to get some insight from people who work there before I submit my application. Would you be willing to share uh, your experience or even just a, a kind of a, a quick hello with how you feel about your organization. That's it. That's the first thing I would have said. Then I would have waited. Why? Because I'm a super patient guy, right? Because I think in terms of hundreds of days, not one day. So I'd, I'd let your alumni, uh, um, alumnus get back to you. And then if the person gets back, you have a high probability that the person will respond. If the person responds, Dana, it's great. Thank you for reaching out. I do enjoy working here. I would say something such as, okay, then I think I'm going to apply. Um, I'm, I'm considering sending a message directly to the CEO. Do you know the CEO well? Second message. And then I wait. And then I get a, I get an, I get a message back. Yes, I know him very well. His name is Andy and he's a cool guy. No, I don't know him very well and so on, right? And then I determine what I want to do. I go back. Well, I'll tell you what. Do you think, third, third exchange, do you think it would be better if I reached out to him or her directly, or do you feel, would you be comfortable uh, letting him know that we connected and passing along my resume? That is, the, that is like, it's chess, baby. It ain't checkers. So that's what I would do there. Okay, now, that's for everybody who hasn't started that yet. 
Now, for Dana, what I would do is I would go to the alum and I would say, um, hey, I'm, I'm considering applying at the organization. I saw that you worked there. Uh, I, I, I reached out to your CEO, but I also wanted to reach out to you to get your perspective on. Don't say the CEO responded or didn't respond. Now, if the person comes back and says, oh, well, that's great, I'd love to help you, or hey, did the CEO respond? You just say, no, CEO has not responded yet, but I, that, that was you know, basically irrelevant. I wanted to reach out to you anyway. Right, something like that. Get it moving. Get it moving, and then take it from there. And you know, and you know what to do from there. Okay, so that's a fantastic one. And then we got another one uh, as well from you. And then it says here, boop. CEO boss hunting a CEO at a smaller company. Auto response back. Slow to respond. Gave his EA con- contact info. I'm assuming you meant you got an auto response that said. Thank you for your email. I'm out of town or I'm so, so on and so forth. Uh, and then here is my executive administrator's contact info. Should you need something urgently, what should I do next? Wait for a response. I would give him or her or them some time and I would wait a week or two and then I would send them another email and that's it, right? You know it went through because you got an auto responder. You don't know if they opened it yet or not. And here again, I'm I'm like Mr. Patient. I I just I I think long term, and then I go off on my my job search challenge, and I'm sending my messages out to other people, and then I'm seeing what happens. Now you could do something else. You know, I mean, you could follow up with the EA and just say, Hey, I I I I wanted to respond to you to let you know I sent this. Do you have any insight? Uh, as to you know when he might be able to consider this or something like that. I don't I don't have a problem with you just bouncing back to the EA, but I probably would have just waited. I, I'd wait a week and let it go. I I just when I when I send anything out into the world, anything um, like an email to you guys, a personal email to somebody where I'm sending it, you know, to one individual or whatever, I send it out and then I don't think about it ever again until they get back to me. I don't look at my email. I don't keep staring at my email. I don't keep worrying about it. I don't think about it because it's it's in God's hands now. (laughs) Off it goes. I did what I could do. I crafted a good email. I wrote a good communication message to you, a good teaching lesson or 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 a marketing message or something like that, alerted you to a show I have or whatever. But that's how you gotta think about that. Those are a couple of great, great questions and um, and uh, it's only eleven thirteen, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on some things I was gonna show you. But um, Stacy, can you do me a favor and take a note of these scenarios because I need to know if I need to add these to the Bible if I'm gonna if I'm gonna have to update the Bible because <laughs> I think we're just gonna keep doing that. I'm just gonna keep updating every scenario that you guys ever ask me if it's not in there. All right, hope that helps. Alyssa, how are you? Boot camper, yes, great to have you. Oh, we got a question from a boot camp or so. We just throw it right up there. All right. Okay, recruiter contacted me with a very good opportunity, and we scheduled a touch base about it. A couple of hours later, a posting from the same company appeared on LinkedIn. What would be a better way to go? Apply to this company directly or stick with the recruiter since she already contacted me. By the way, I am a career changer, so I thought that the recruiter route would be a better choice here, and you would be correct. And I almost want to make a blanket statement, but I I hate saying never and always, even though sometimes those slip out of my mouth. When I say it three times like never, 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 I really mean never. But in this case, generally, usually, typically, um... I would always go back to a person I made a connection with. Because if you've established any kind of relationship, even if it's an email relationship, um, there's, they, they're getting a feel of you. They're getting a feel to know you that, is gonna, that should help you. And if, if, you've, if, you've re- if the recruiters reached out to you and, and you set up a get to know you or whatever, go back to that person and say, I noticed a position opened up. This is something that would be of interest to me. Um, it's in alignment with what I shared with you about and make a connection, 
Like, hopefully you had that conversation, but if you haven't actually spoken to the person, just say, as I mentioned in my message to you, or whatever, but try to draw a parallel. That is always the better way to go. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, if I was job searching, I literally, I, I'm not, I'm not actually being funny. I would never, 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 three nevers, put my resume into an applicant tracking system unless somebody literally made me. Okay, I, I like as in, uh, hey, go fill that out in our system. If I was boss hunting and somebody said, go put it in the system, I have a routine that I'm giving you, I would not use that. And the reason I would not use that is because I'm not putting my resume in an applicant tracking system. I would rather go spend my time finding somebody else who I can develop a relationship and send them, my mes- send them my message and send them my resume. That's me. But I recognize a lot of you uh, want to open these avenues. You want to put your resume in the applicant tracking system because you think it's going to give you additional routes or, or, or uh, uh, extra chances. But what I'm telling you is every time you do anything in your life, when you say yes to something, you say no to something else. If I have to take 15 minutes or 30 minutes or however long it takes me to put my resume into an applicant tracking system, that's like 10 people I can't find. That's, that's what I'm trading. An ability to go find 10 people that I could probably find in that amount of time to go send my messages to. Okay, so that's just how I feel. So Alyssa, I, I want you to do whatever you need to, but in this case, because of this scenario, I want you to go back to the recruiter. That's how. That's a better use of your time. I hope that helps. All right. God love you. All right. Adam Stark, I get a one or two. Your life goal is a film director? I love it. Uh, it is an unconventional career. I don't know. There's a lot of film directors. It's not that unconventional. My path over the next two to three years is to create short films on the side one at a time and get a secure job to live. Nothing wrong with that. New role will directly, indirectly lead to directing. Done discovery requirements, research, got a few top potential careers, having issues picking one as all tick my boxes. Any advice? If, uh, well, I, I, I do. Um, Number one, this exact scenario where I'm not sure, like I'm not sure I have different options, I'm not sure I have different skill sets. Uh, I don't, I don't believe that you are in my job search coaching program, the the boot camp. But in the boot camp, we have a whole session on this question, a whole session on this question, like. 30, 40 minutes of nothing, but this is how you figure that out by making sure that you are taking steps that are putting you in the right direction that you don't have to make the choice. You can keep moving because we don't usually get it until we get into it. And when we get into it, what happens? We have more data than when we were sitting at our desk planning it and thinking about it and running through matrices and requirements and these other things that I do want you to do. But you have to go out and get data. If you are not sure, because a lot of them you would be comfortable with at the moment based on, I stress these words, based on what you know, which is very limited. So you can do a couple of different things for for purposes of public consumption here uh, to to get you some value on this. First thing that I would do is I would keep going until I had a separator, meaning Something on this side of this option of let's say you got two or three options is going to trump it and supersede it. And then I'm going to take my steps that way if it is clear. If it is not clear, I'm going to get in motion and I am going to start doing things that could be construed as common among the different paths. So like if I create my short films... If I decide that there's a detraction somewhere along the way, six months from now, a year from now, what will creating my short films, or in, for any of you, insert whatever you're doing there, will that be beneficial in preparing me from a future for a future career, a future goal, or whatever? So it's like if I go this route and I ever get off the track. Is all of this going to be isolated to this stream, this track? If it is, that you're increasing your risks substantially. Now, there's one school of thought that is, well, you don't need a plan B. Make plan plan A work. That's my school. Okay, that's the school I go to. But a lot of people don't like to do that. 
uh, they like to hedge. So if you're a hedger, you need to make sure that you're picking something that you are going to, to use, to develop, to, in, to initiate or, or start your growth or whatever it's going to do that's going to be applicable regardless of which path you choose. So if developing these films is giving you entertainment experience, I'm talking about the industry experience, if it's going to help you build your network in the space, all the other things that are foundationally important for success for anything any of you do, right? Skills and knowledge, people, my network, the education I get and in the experience that I'm deciding, where I'm deciding to spend my time, I would not be spending it in school unless you are absolutely certain you want to go get a degree and then use that as your springboard. But I would rather have on-the-job training or something close to it, volunteer work or something where you're doing practical things. So I hope that helps. Uh, if, if, uh, if you do have ambition and you want to get in the job search boot camp, I know Kara would be willing to give you $100 off to you or anybody if you want to jump in the program. We're going to be having it on special here in a couple of weeks. Uh, but if, you, if it's something you want to consider email us at support at milewalk.com. But I think that's the way I would think through that. Like I, there, are, there are certain things that you need to do at your desk that will help you choose a path that gets you moving in a direction where you are insulating yourself from risk. You're literally, it doesn't matter what you choose at a later date, you're, you're on the right trajectory and you're on the right, you're in the right kind of lane, so to speak. And, um, and I would also argue one little parting, I know I'm kind of rambling here, but one little parting thought, the trajectory you are on at any moment in time is so far more important than where you are at any moment in time. Okay. You're not a dot on a map. Okay. You're moving. All right. Are you moving in the right direction? Like, cause I, I don't, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about, oh, you know, I, I live in the moment. And I let my past guide me and I think about where, where I want to go in my future. And I think that all my present day actions need to do two things. They need to, I need to enjoy what I'm doing, which I'm loving this at this moment. But this is positioning me for the future that I want. And I don't do anything that doesn't position me for the future that I want. I really don't. And, 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 and I know a lot of you might think that's silly or how could that possibly be? Well, that's a lot of years of working at making sure that you have the right mindset so that you don't accumulate, take on, or, or put yourself in a position where you're going to have some, some handcuffs, some shackles, or, or things that aren't going to let you um, work toward what it is that you want. So, Adam, think, think about all that. I know that was a mouthful, but that's a really great question, and I wanted to spend a little more time on it because I think it has applicability for a lot of you. I think a lot of people are confused about what direction they want to go. That's especially important right now during our pandemic, which has displaced a lot of people. Right? A lot of people lost jobs, then they started to look into different careers than they otherwise might, might have. It's a great question. It really is. GM, does Andrew answer the questions on YouTube or another social media platform? Well, I answer them here for sure. I also try to answer them on LinkedIn. By the way, if we are not connected, first degree connection on LinkedIn, why the hell not? Send me a connection request. Say, Andy, I was on your show today. You were yell you're yapping to Adam about something, and I would love to be connected. And the reason, you might be wondering, why do I want to be connected with you? Well, number one, uh, I think, uh, first off, I love being connected to people because I love people. And I value the network, and I, I want you to be able to take advantage of my network. That's a great thing for LinkedIn. But another great thing about LinkedIn is you might follow me, in which case you're getting circulations that I'm putting out on LinkedIn, articles, messages, videos, podcasts, whatever it might be. But you all are my greatest teachers. And for me to help you best, I need to know what problems you have. I need to know what the dialogue is, is about. And if I'm not connected to you, uh, I don't I don't see that. I don't see what you're circulating. I don't see what you're commenting on. So I like to be connected so I can follow you too. So that's, that's on LinkedIn. I love Instagram as well. We put out two videos every day, Monday through Friday, and I put out my inspirational quotes and we put a few other things out there. It's my favorite platform. And we put the one to five minute videos on, uh, on, on Instagram and we, we reserve YouTube for the live shows and the longer videos. So it's, uh, it's kind of a great little, um, you know, combination. We have, I think we might have, 
uh, Stacy, I don't know if we have more videos on Instagram now than we do than we do on YouTube. And I've got 500 videos on YouTube. So it's like, this is a lot. Uh, let me see. We've got, uh, what else? Let me see. Kara's here. Natalie Allman, great to see you back. Gary Hoover, always a good time. Gary McNeil, when you say April, May, June, July are looking good to find a job, do you think that applies to Canada as well or just the U.S.? So let me say this. Uh, every, uh, every market sector, every demographic, every there's always little nuances of trends, right? It's like the stock market. You know, financial services might be going up. Manufacturing might be going sideways. Automotive might be going this or that way. And there's a lot of connectivity, right? And so there's always that, that, that ripple effect. But there can be micro uh, trends as well. That goes for countries too. And while I uh, am in, in the U.S. and have been my whole life, I've worked with a lot of people from different countries. We have over 100 countries that are in the Job Search Coaching Program alone. And, and I do a lot of coaching sessions with people in different countries. Uh, this, you know, last couple of weeks, I've hit just every, I've hit every continent. Uh, sometimes I hit three continents in a day. Um, and I will tell you that the people that I'm interacting with in Canada are getting jobs. They're getting great jobs. So depending on what you do, or then it becomes, well, wh where do you live? Where are you, where are you targeting? Uh, what is your background, right? So all that plays a part. But to answer your question in general, I think the market right now is, is healthy as far as the employment market is concerned. So the short answer is yes. The, the long answer is you gotta look at all those other things. And then if it's, well, hey, I've got really good skills. I'm not getting a lot of interviews. Okay, well, then it's, are, are, is you, how's your traction? Are you, are you consistent day in, day out? Are you sending your messages? All that good stuff. So then it becomes those other things. But in general, I would say yes. And, and, and what Gary's saying here too, April, May, June, July. When I, I, you know, a couple days ago, we put out a clip from a live show I did a couple weeks even prior. And I was talking about August being a slower month this year, that has more to do with the fact that things are picking up now, but like this weekend, I'm going to get my second uh, uh, shot, my, my second COVID shot, and then, you know, kind of 15 days after, a couple weeks after, you know, they say, all right, well, then, you know, it's kind of settled into your body and, and, and you're, you're, you know, you've been vaccinated and obviously we don't want to be reckless, but, you know, these things were feeling good. So people who, like me, who were reluctant to travel, I would now get on a plane. I'll do these things. So what happens in the summertime is uh, generally people take vacations anyway, but people haven't been taking vacations at the rate that they normally would because of the pandemic. I have not gotten on a plane since December of 2019. This might be one of the longest stretches of my life where I actually haven't traveled. And what I was saying in my marketing trends assessment is that, you know, things are picking up, people are getting vaccinated, uh, we're starting to relax some of the restrictions, uh, and, and what'll happen is um, August will roll around, a lot more people will be vaccinated, people will be more comfortable, kids are going back to school, you know, August and September, so there's going to be a lot of people out of the office because they're going to be traveling. I, that, I just, I can tell that's going to happen. And it won't happen everywhere, but it's going to happen in a lot of places. So I think August will slow down and September might bounce back up, right? Assuming things stay the way they are for the near future. So that's, if, if you guys are wondering, you know, where that came from, uh, check out the video I popped out. This one's a 45 minute -er that I popped out on Tuesday. Um, let me see. Uh, Kara is telling me. You know what? It's bottom of the hour, and uh, I want to I want to tell you I want to make a quick announcement. So we've got a job search mini camp. This is different than my job search boot camp. So my job search coaching program, the the boot camp, the collection of stuff is my signature program, and that's the one I said Kara will give you a hundred dollars off. That's a $600 program. You can get it for $500. There's a whole bunch of other stuff in it. That's kind of the big mega program. It's full on. You get everything's recorded. It's self-paced. You get online support. So when Dana said Andy answers all your questions, that's because I either answer them with the microphone or I answer them with my, my fingertips. <laughs> and there's online support. And then there's live coaching support. And in the month of May, 
uh, we're getting together eight times with that group. So there's plenty of time for you to ask me questions. But also in May, I'm running my, my annual Greatest Tips workshop. So four times a year, I run workshops. One is an interviewing workshop, one is a resume writing workshop, one is a job search challenge, it's a job searching workshop, and then I like to have one that's a catch-all, where I talk about the different phases of the job search, like the resume, and then job searching, and interviewing, and salary negotiation, my greatest tips for the current year for each of those areas of your job search. It's free, and you can watch it on my YouTube channel. But we also have a VIP pass that is a 47 bucks. It's the best 47 bucks you'll spend on your career in your life. And I just want to show you one thing that we that that we are doing. If you are in this the VIP pass in for the job search mini camp, so that's free, and all of you can watch it for free. But if you are in my job search coaching program where you've paid the 500 bucks, you get these VIP this VIP pass. Or if you pay $47, you get this VIP pass. And part of the VIP program is you get to, you get to watch the, the mini camp, that four-part workshop, with me in a private Zoom room. We'll have, um, we'll have workbooks for you. We will have all the recordings for you, meaning after the, the shows are shot, I will deposit them into your training library and, and you'll have them forever, lifetime access to this. And then I've got some tools and some templates that you're also gonna get as a VIP. There's a few other things, but basically your $47 goes a long way. And so I wanna show you what it is that you're gonna get, and I wanna show you something that I've made available now. So for those of you that don't know what the what the online programs look like in the Mile Walk Academy, this is pretty typical, there's a structure, but this is the Job Search Mini Camp. I'm guessing that Kara has put the put the um, the link for you to register in the chat. And then what happens is we have a mobile app. You can get into the private community groups and all that good stuff. You also can have credit of your $47 should you decide at some later date that you want to upgrade your, your training library. But then what's going to happen is on May 11th, we're going to talk about the resume and it's going to be about how to write the perfect resume bullet. It's really good stuff. Uh, I've got the slides and all that. You'll get access to all of that. And then the Q&A session will be broken out and you'll have access to that. And then on May 13th, we're going to talk about job searching, but in particular, we're going to talk about boss hunting. And you've noticed I've gotten a couple of questions already about boss hunting, and I'm sure that there are a few more in the chat somewhere. Then we're going to talk about interviewing, and we're going to talk about salary negotiation. Maybe what I need to do is wear these shirts on this day, because these, these thumbnails are just... <laughs> placeholders, but there's one placeholder I want to show you. So if you jump in to the to this program right now, uh, I have this new boss hunting Bible. You might have heard me referring to it uh, with Dana because people in my job search coaching program, the big, the big program, already have access to this, but this is also available for anybody who's paid their $47. And basically what you do is you just go in here and this boss hunting Bible, you guys might be familiar with my boss hunting templates, but I, you've never seen anything like this. Um, I, I, I go through the approach. Uh, I, I talk about how to send these via email. Should you attach stuff? What subject line should you use? What if you find multiple people at the company and so on? And then there's some some do nots. Please do not uh, do that. You know, when should I quit? And then I give you the templates. I've tweaked these a little bit. Um, whether you op know an open position exists and you found the boss or you just found a boss that you want to target and you don't. And then there's going to be a bunch of responses. They're going to say yes. They're going to say, nope, that's Susie down the hall. They're going to say, nope, you got to talk to the recruiter. They're going to tell you to put it in the applicant tracking system because their corporate website says so. They're going to say, thanks, I'm not interested. They're going to say, how did you get my email address? They're going to be mean to you occasionally, and they might not respond. I've written every single response that you, you could cut and paste and send, literally, down to the dot. You almost don't need to change any of these words. And I've copy written everything, and then I know you're going to have questions. And Dana was asking me one about, well, if it's a small company, should I contact the CEO? 
Well, I, we, I go in and I answer all this stuff as well. And then you guys gotta know, I put in the marketing machine funnel for you. So the picture's in there. Uh, we're having all kinds of fun with this stuff. But basically, that's available now. So if you guys are, like I just, I'm so giddy about that damn thing. I spent Sunday, I literally, I wrote it on a Sunday because I thought that's a little on the nose, right? So like I spent Sunday, put the whole dang thing together, threw it out to the team. Kara and Stacy looked at it. We all pow out on Monday or Tuesday, and then I shot it out to people in the job search coaching program, but we also placed it uh, in the product for the people who are VIPs, the $47 uh, payment for the VIP perks pass. You get that right now, no waiting. So I, you know, have at it. It's basically everything you wanna know about boss hunting, and I copy wrote everything. So I know that um, for those people that are actually in my job search coaching program, uh, so there's two ways to get that little Bible. You can be in the job search coaching program or you can be a VIP in the job search mini camp. But in the job search coaching program, I also wrote 10 networking templates for you. So when you're interacting with other people, how do you open up relationships with individuals, target individuals, even when they're not bosses? So um, it's it's pretty powerful stuff. And, and, and I get emails every day from people asking me, can I just buy the networking templates booklet? Because that would make my life a lot easier. And we don't sell that separately. But this boss hunting Bible, I get so many questions about this. I mean, this is a tactic. I started this thing five years ago, more than that. And, um, and people have been using it successfully ever since. And you would be amazed if you don't think um, that this works. We have certain people that in the Milo Academy Facebook group, they've run surveys about how, you know, how, how are you getting the most traction? This one works the most by far. Uh, of any technique. That's why I say I would never spend my time putting a resume into an applicant tracking system. Unless, well, and if boss tells you, hey, put it in your applicant tracking system, I tell you what to do. I tell you what to say to the boss. I tell you what to say to the boss and then what to do next. All that stuff is, is written and guided in that booklet. So the dozen pages or so. Pretty cool. A lot of fun. Uh, I, hope, I hope you get in. It, believe me, it, that alone, even if you didn't watch anything else in the minicamp, is worth the 47 bucks. It really is. <laughs> So I hope, uh, hope y'all have at it. All right. Gerardo, my boot camper. Okay, love this. All right, Mr. Gerard. Andy, I just got an email with a rejection. I am preparing your rejection email. Do you think it's appropriate uh, it is appropriate for one final call with the executive recruiter for more complete and elaborate feedback. I do. If and only if. If and only if. Right? Because every circumstance is different. If, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run you through both of them. If I get into an interviewing process, I go through and I meet with a number of people. Okay, so it's like, it's not like, hey, I screened you and we decided, Gerard, you're not the right person for us. I would not get into any elaborate discussion. If you had a second interview, I would not get into any elaborate discussion. If you've gone through the process and they say, Gerard, this is great, but we, we just we decided to pick somebody else or we really wish you would have had a little more of this or that, so we're going we're gonna to pass. If you get down to the end like that and it is not clear why they passed, meaning they didn't overtly offer it or proactively offer it to you, I would send my uh, email rejection script. If you guys don't know what he's talking about, uh, I have a video on the YouTube channel about how to get the job after getting rejected or after being rejected. Just type La Civita rejected in Google. It'll pop right up. Or Stacy could pop in the chat. Uh, if you went through a process, then I would say, would you be open to sharing feedback with me? Uh, would you be open to sharing feedback with me in a quick call? Be clear that that's how you want the feedback. I, I don't really need the feedback via email. I need to actually talk it out. If Now, I also have a video on getting feedback. Stacy, can we give him the video on getting feedback? And I, the one on, on YouTube, not the one on Instagram. Give him the one on YouTube as well. And I, would, I, I want you to have context for what to expect when you are requesting feedback, how to get it, how to use it. All right, that's on my YouTube channel. So what to expect when you're asking for feedback. This matters. 
context matters. And if if you were if you did not go through the, to the, the interview process the way I described, meaning you met with all those people, then you got down to the end. If it was shorter, I would not be asking. I would ask for the feedback very like e- email me whatever you w- would like to offer use it take it with a grain of salt and that would be that right keep me in mind you know for anything else and so forth all right i hope that helps buddy donna morley hello there is an artful way to reply to an interview uh, oh is there an artful uh way to reply to an interviewer who loads his questions with the phrase if it is not indiscreet to ask uh, this has happened uh, with queries into my financial medical realm. So this is a very interesting question, Donna. I'm not sure what your situation is. Uh, if, 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 if I have somebody who's asking, you know, loads the question, now you say loads his question with if it's not indiscreet to ask. That, that is, and those are irrelevant words. It's what's the question and then why is that important to you? So my response, my response is before I answer anything, say you can ask me anything you want. Um, And by the way, I don't really care what anybody asks me, but I appreciate that there are things that they should not be asking you. Use your discretion on whether you would like to share that stuff. Age, children, religion, you know, all all the stuff that they shouldn't really be asking you. But if... If somebody asked me something regarding my financial or medical realm, I would say I'd like to understand before I answer. I'd like to understand why that's important to you. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't believe you're in my leadership program. I have a leadership membership. It's a monthly uh, coaching program that we get together, and I talk about how to ascertain these kind of things from an individual. It applies to interviews. It applies to everything, and um, and and I'm always about. I need to understand before I answer, or I need to understand before I influence, or I need to understand before I sell. I need to understand before I buy. I need to understand anything. Why? Why is that important to you? That would be my response to somebody who said, if it is not indiscreet to ask, you can ask. Why is that important to you before I respond? That I would, I would ask that. So that's my response. I would actually ask a clarifying question. You didn't, act, it's not, yeah, I understand the expression, well, you shouldn't answer a question with a question. It's not. I asked for a clarification so I could, I could best respond to you and highlight what's important for you to know based on what it is you need to know and why you need to know it. Okay, so that's, that's the way I would respond there, Donna. That's a, a really good one, a really good one. That would be my first response. And then I would determine based on his or her why, whether I wanted and how I wanted to package what I wanted to package. And, and not knowing your financial or medical situation, um, because I would say something different to everybody. If I had a medical ailment and I was all cured, I'd say I was out for a medical ailment and all that is all taken care of and it's, we're free and clear to go, right, kind of thing. So you get, you get, my, you get my meaning. Uh, Kara is telling me, oh, Maureen, Scalantino, the Boss Hunting Bible is awesome. She's in my job search coach program. Lots of great info that you can't get anywhere else in the marketing funnel is gold. And Eric Anderson, man, I wish, I wish I knew where these were in the chat. Everyone, just do it and get into the boot camp and get the resources, inspiration, good thoughts, and daily positivity to know this is only a temporary situation. It's not just me. It's the whole community. It's the whole framework. It's everything. It, when I said, you know, the VIP perks pass is the best 47 bucks you'll ever spend, the the boot camp is the best four ninety seven you'll ever spend. It really is, and I know I think the page has it for five ninety seven, which is what we sell it for on a on a daily basis. But if you're in my community and you come to the shows and you see me say this, I'm happy to give you a hundred bucks off. The you know the deadlines and the promotions that we have are to make it so that we 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 get you in, get you paying attention. But if if you know if if that's an inconvenient date for you, that's okay. You just come to me when it's convenient for you. And I'll, I'll uh, I mean, we don't do these things artificially. We do them so that we, because we, we have something going on, like a string of coaching sessions or things of that nature. So anyway, I hope you guys do jump in. Plug for the Boss Honey Bible. Uh, when, uh, when Juan Mool emailed the team lead and referred my resume to HR, what should I reply? Well, that's in the Boss Hunting Bible. 
And that's the stuff I'm going over on May 13th. That's a great, a great, great question. All right. What do we got here? You did, he said. Hey, Andy, I just had to quit my job a month back because of the toxic environment they had after serving for more than eight years. And that, too, after I got promoted this year. What should I do next? Well, I can't tell you what to do next. I would obviously start looking for a job. If you are thinking about a career change, I would go watch my career changer playlist. If you're thinking about a job search, uh, if you're in my coaching program, we give it to you A through Z in, in the order in which I lay it out for you. If you're not in the job search coaching program, you can stop by the job search mini camp or the other alternative is to go to YouTube and, and find the video about how to choose the right job. I would start there. That would be my very first step. For anybody who quits their job, gets let go, got fired, or anything like that, the very first thing I would do, if you don't want to get into my job search boot camp, is to go to my YouTube channel and find the video on how to choose the right job. And that is step number one. Step number one. Give it a go. Jim Arm, a boot camper, hey, and Grace accepted a six month contract with a great company. Awesome. Thank you for all your help. Your videos have been invaluable. You are welcome. You know you are welcome, Grace Under Pressure. And these live office sessions have kept me motivated and cheerful. You are the jam. I love that. I appreciate that. I love showing up. Do you know? I have not missed a Thursday all year long. Actually, it goes way back into this, into last year. But I'm I like to be Mr. Consistent. I really do. You all should be consistent. Consistency wins. All right, baby girl, my Instagram friend. You signed up for the mini boot camp. Awesome. I love that. I love that. Richard Van Warden, hey from Barcelona to you. You are a boot camper and was asked to update. My profile, including experience of APIs, microservices, etc. I only have theoretical knowledge of this. So how far should I go in stretching, exaggerating my profile? Well, so first off, Richard, we don't use words like stretching, exaggerating, or anything that could be construed as borderline line. I'm just teasing you. Um, I, I, this. Let's talk mindset here for a second. Let's talk psychology. Let's talk about how people hear things. Okay. First thing is, all of you, this happens, right? Talk about what you are, not what you're not. The best way to identify this, so you were asked to update your profile. Now, I don't know what that means when you say update your profile. Your LinkedIn profile, your whatever. So somebody asked you, um, I, don't, I don't know why they asked you. Was it a, like a profile in their applicant tracking system? Whatever, that would be helpful because I would tell you to do different things depending on what it is you're updating. But let's just, regardless of that, I talk about what I am, not what I'm not. I have, I have, and when you say theoretical knowledge, you've either been trained, you've worked on it on your own, you have analogous expertise, meaning I haven't used this product before, but I used one just like it. You talk about what you are, okay? And then you elevate the concepts, whatever. Okay, so experience working with various blah, blah, blahs for APIs and microservices, whatever that is, and any tools you've used, right? Have, um, you know, working, you know, working knowledge if it is, um, have you know academic knowledge if it is, have self-study if it is, whatever. You talk about what you are. Then you talk about what you've done analogously, and then you talk about, and, and if you're live and exchanging, you talk about what it is you do to get up to speed whenever you've faced something that is new to you. Whenever I've encountered something new, here's what I do, here's my plan, here's what I do first, second, third, fourth, and so on. I'm organized. Microservices, APIs, technologies, this and that. Right? Are you a technologist? Are you, right? So, okay, I get that. Right? We, especially in where we're talking about these kind of products and services, they're constantly changing. So you you're always being faced with things you haven't seen before: new algorithms, new routines, new products, new whatevers. Right? So that's really important. Now, I don't know what profile you're putting this on, uh, or why somebody would ask you to do that, but that's how I would go about it. And if I was faced with that in an interview. I would, I would go about it that way. Now, one other thing here, not to really like inundate you with free stuff. This book, Interview Intervention, it's sitting there behind my Out of Reach But Insight book and right before the Hiring Prophecies book. But this book, 
Uh, we give it away for the book free. Uh, you get the book, book, this book, you get the ebook, you get the audio book, and you get a $27. So this $29 book you get free. You get my ebook free that if you buy it on Amazon is nine bucks. You get the audio book, which is nowhere other than Andy's website. Because Andy talked it and it's not on audio anywhere else. Uh, you could buy the ebook at iTunes, iBooks, or Nook, or Kindle, or whatever. Uh, you can also get a, a book called How to Interview the Employer, 75 Great Questions to Ask Before You Take Any Job. That's a $27 ebook that we sell on our site. I'll give you that for free as well. And we, 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 if we, we'll mail it to you anywhere in the world if you pay the 7 bucks for the envelope and the service guys in the warehouse that have to go get it, pack the label, ship it out through USPS or the, whatever way they send this to you. So uh, anywhere in the world. So you can have that. The reason I brought this up is because... There is a Silver Bullet interview chapter. And in the Silver Bullet interview chapter, on page 58, there is a question that is exactly what Richard needs uh, in order to answer something like this on his profile in an interview about how you educate yourself because that's ultimately the packaged response that you need whenever you are faced with something that you have not done yet or don't have a load of experience in. And so the three pieces that I gave you about talk about what you are, talk about something that you've, you've done analogously, and then talk about how to get up to speed. I lay that out for you. I also have a video on YouTube about how to get the job when you lack the experience. Check that out. So I think we've squashed this one, my boot camper, and I will see you in May as well. Yvonne, ah, oh, my Southern Cal boot camper. Great to have you and my Instagram friend. John Marks, how do Andy and the rest of the Las Vita followers from Petaluma? Great to have you. Uh, was that? Yeah, I have fire protection services interview next Thursday. Can we give John Marks a good live office hours hug, some juju, some high 10, whatever it is that we send to people when they go out into the interviewing world? And then also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do that. You know I tell you this every week. It hurts me when you don't get my new stuff every Tuesday at 6.30 Central Time or on Thursday at 11 a.m. Central Time when I do my live show. I wanna make sure you have that. If you're enjoying this, click the little thumbs up button. YouTube loves the action. YouTube loves the likes. It loves the shares. And believe me, there are people out there that need your help. Can you imagine, wait, how many of you? I never looked, 188 of you. Could you imagine if all 188 of you just clicked share and sent this to LinkedIn or to Twitter or to Facebook? or wherever, and one person saw it from you, I am telling you, you matter. You matter. Your circulation of this stuff matters. If you are in, if, heck, if you're still sitting here with me 52 minutes in, or you joined late, even if you've only been here two minutes, I'm assuming you enjoy this, um, and I, 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 I hope it's helping you. That's why I do it, and I want to serve you. Can, can All you got to do is pay it forward to somebody. One person. If one person takes advantage of this, imagine that. Imagine the ripple effect. It's amazing. It is amazing. I, I want to tell you guys something. I'm gonna give you, I want to give you this for free. And, uh, you know, I always say, like, I'll serve this one up. And I hope you take this with you out today and for the rest of your life. You know, I started a YouTube channel and there were no subscribers. I did a Facebook Live Thing and nobody showed up. And I never thought about having 188 people. And I know some of these live shows have 288 people and or whatever they have. And I never really thought because I don't think of you as a number, okay? Because you're real people with real problems and real aspirations, just like me. You have feelings, you have problems, you have right challenges. Uh, some of you hate your job. Some of you enjoy your job, but you want a better job. Some of you, you know, your industry has been blitzed by the pandemic. Everybody's got their own issues. And I was at a conference once. It was a training seminar, basically, in 2016. And I, I was starting to put videos out on, on my YouTube channel. And I was sitting there in the audience, and um, there was about 800 people in the room. And I was sitting kind of two thirds of the way back, um, just that you know, basically they were filling in from the front, and that's when I got there. And I was learning about 
you know, becoming a, a trainer like this. And I was taking, you know, some lessons from, from somebody who was dang good at it. And um, there was a woman in the audience and she said, you know, raise her hand, hand her the microphone. And uh, she said, you know, it's really uh, deflating when I put a YouTube video together and only a hundred people watch it. And he so was listening. He jumps off the stage, walks down the stairs, goes out into the conference area, and walks down the center aisle. And he goes about, you know, I don't know, ten, five, ten rows in, or whatever it was. And he said, would everybody in these front rows stand up? And they all stood up. And he looked at the woman and he said, that's what 100 people look That's what 100 people looks like. So if you guys don't think that sending it to your community of 100 people matters, I'm telling you it does. You, you cannot believe how much people's lives will change when you do these things. But if you think small, if you're afraid to start something because no one's watching it, you're, you're depriving this world. You really are. You really are. I'll never forget what that 100 people look like. I won't. Okay, th this one gets me a little choked up, but I'm telling you, it matters. It matters. You, you, need, you, need, you need to not think small, and you need to not be afraid to start small. Because if, if you're afraid to start small, you're listening to, the, you're listening to the wrong part of your ego. Okay, so do it. Do it. Don't worry about how you look. And share it. And share your ideas. Share the stuff. Share my stuff. Share your stuff. The world needs it. They do. A hundred people. Believe me. All right, where was I? Clinton. T.S. Deborah Chapman from Long Island. How are you? Miami Mike, new boot camper, awesome. Deborah Chapman, nothing but success on all Andy's advice. The recruiters and waiting is killing me slowly. Deborah, hold on. I got. I want to say something about this. Um, the best way is to not feel as though you're waiting. Okay, I know you saw. Actually, I. I don't know if you signed up for the, maybe you signed up for the mini camp. I don't know if I, I thought I saw your name come through. Um, you got to control what you can control and put yourself in motion. So remember before about half an hour ago, I said, um, you know, it, you know, I put out that email and then I never think about it. I want you to do that. I want you to do what I do things like that. It is very clinical. It's not, it's not robotic in an unemotional, like that. I don't care. It's, I did care. I cared enough to identify you. I cared enough to target you. I cared enough that I wrote a, a, a well-crafted message. I cared enough to hit the send button. I cared enough to go to my spreadsheet and add I sent this email to so-and-so on such a date and time via email, via LinkedIn or whatever. That's it. That's all I can control. Next one, go. Next one, go. I'm telling you, the more consistent you are, the more in motion you are. I'm not talking about like spraying and praying. I'm talking about being consistent. The luckier you will get. And the more you will not be worried about how long is it taking for somebody to get back to me. Okay? I don't care if they get back to me. You know why? Because I'm going to contact three more people today or five or ten. And tomorrow I'm going to do the same thing. And in two weeks, that's, right? If I just did this Monday through Friday, that's 15 people a week. That's 30 people in two weeks. I don't care if that person gets back to me. Right? Because I'm putting myself out there. Do it. Do it. Do it. All right. Hang on. What do we got? Hey, team, I know you, you guys have been chatting me some stuff. Uh, okay. I want to answer a couple of these because they're really, they're really good. 
Um, all right, Deborah Chapman, I'm, I'm back on you. Most large companies I apply to tell me they need the resume in the ATS to process my application to the position. Can't really get around the ATS even if I talk to the recruiter first. That is true. There's a legality to it. However, the way in which you get the resume into the ATS or the table you set for yourself before the resume goes into the ATS, the better off you are. Don't pay any attention to those sites that say, we do not respond to anybody who does not send their application through our silly applicant trashing system. Don't pay any attention to that. You go target the bosses, you go target the recruiters, that's fine. If they say put it in the ATS, and Deborah Chapman, if you actually got in the minicamp, you do have the bus hunting Bible, and I give you the exact response to that. Okay, so, so go do that. I, as a, an executive recruiter, so Mile Walk, the exec, there's Mile Walk, the executive search firm, and there's Mile Walk Academy, of which all of you are part of, the online training and coaching programs. When, you are, when we would present candidates to our clients, the hiring companies, we'd take the resume, we'd put the resume over to the hiring official, the COO, the chief whatever of this or that, or the head of talent acquisition or whoever we're dealing with. And they would say, this is great. And then they would talk to the person, they'd interview, and they'd say, oh, by the way, we need, to put your, we need to fill out the application. That's right. Okay, fine. So they'd go and they'd fill it in. It's the same kind of thing. I want you to have that mindset. That's fine. You can put it in. But if you talk to the recruiter, you already talked to the recruiter. That's all we care about. And you pop it right in. And then Iman is asking, my boot camper, after application via ATS, can I contact random staffing recruiter via LinkedIn at the firm about it? I, first off, Iman, I would, okay, yes, you could use the boss hunting Bible because you have it. And yes, you have it on, it's on page 10. Okay, right. In the boss hunting Bible, which Iman has, is on page 10. But here's what I would do. Go to the, first off, go to the recruiter first. I'd rather you go to the boss. And why would I, okay, so let, 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 this is valuable here, okay? So, so he's asking, can I go to the staffing or recruitment department via LinkedIn at that firm where I have already submitted my application? First thing is you want to go after a boss. Why? Because bosses are always looking to hire great people. They will always look at your resume. They might not have an open position, but if I look at your resume and I love you, I might trade somebody off my team and open up a position. Or I might have a position that I'm thinking about that the recruiting department doesn't know. Okay, that's the best. If you send it to the recruiter, that's, that's not bad. Okay, that's not bad. It's better than the applicant tracking system, but if I'm the recruiter and Andy's team doesn't have an opening and you're, you're sending it to me because you want to be on Andy's team, I might say, some recruiters will say, no, I know that guy's always looking. I'm going to look at this guy's resume. Or what most recruiters, corporate recruiters will do, is they'll say, Iman, I, I can't even look at your email because I, I got all these other 10 Andys over here yelling at me because they don't have their people, so I got to focus on that. Okay, now, now that's the next best. If you go to the applicant tracking system, that's the worst. Even if you're a dead bullseye match, you have less than a 3% chance of even being seen, let alone getting a, given an interview. Imagine what the percentage is of people who initially, who initiate their application through the applicant tracking system is. Imagine what those numbers look like. Okay, you have a better chance of being found by somebody while you're minding your own business on LinkedIn of getting your job that way, 8%, than you do of getting your job through the applicant tracking system. Now, Iman is asking, okay, well, I submitted it already. All right, and this is all I care about because you did what's done is done, right? You submitted it, and I'm telling you, if you submitted it, I would pretend like they never even saw it. And I would send my resume to the recruiter via email and say, I noticed you had this position. I'd like to submit my blah, blah, blah. Use a cover letter. You could say, if you want, toss it in. I also, if you need more information on me, I did apply online through your applicant trashing system. Okay. That's how I would go there. Actually, that, that, I structured this up for you if you have to do this because you know it's there. But yes, you can. You can go and target them. All right. Let me see. Kara, how am I doing on the Slack stuff? I want to get back to the chat chat. Nirmai, what is the best way to articulate an answer to the question, how do you promote diversity as a leader of the group? I love this. Okay. So leaders build more leaders. They don't build more followers. The best leaders 
figure out how to manage an entire team by maximizing the individual performances of the people on the team because everybody is incented, and I'm not talking about dollars and cents, but yeah, does too. Incented differently, motivated differently, cares about different stuff. There's two people on the team and both of these people while they might be the senior analyst on the team, this one cares about career advancement and this one cares about work-life balance. This one cares about more money and this one cares about title. Everybody's motivated differently and that's okay. All right? So when I talk about promoting diversity, I do a couple of things. As I'm looking to, there's now diversity could mean different things to different people. It could mean different uh, different nationalities, backgrounds, uh, and experiences, and demographics, right? All different kinds of people that walk this, this earth. It could be diversity of ideas from different individuals on the team, all right? So what I'm a proponent of, and I did this as I would build teams as a consultant, I managed very large groups. And what I would always uh, do with the staffing uh, unit who would help me get the resources for my team is I would say to them uh, it's more it's very important to me that we have diversity of all kinds meaning I need men and women I don't need 10 men and a woman and I don't want 11 women and a guy right kind of thing so I like a mix because men and women think differently they just do that's okay I don't think there's anything wrong with that statement we do care about different things, we think differently, we come from different backgrounds. I would also like people from different schools, backgrounds, whatever. I don't want 10 electrical engineers. I want, I need business people, I need whatever. Give, try to make that diverse. Also, if we have um, minorities, different cultures, other, other uh, individuals where we can create a very eclectic group, I don't care that each of them is motivated by different things because as the leader, it's my job to actually engage with the individual, understand what the individual's motivations, interests are, and so forth, and then manage them individually through a series of processes that's put together. Everybody has the protocols that they need to operate within, except that from a motivation standpoint, you need to treat each of them individually, interact with them individually to understand how to elevate their game because when they're all maximizing their performance, the team is going to be even greater. Okay, so so from a, from a uh, I don't want to use the word recruitment, but basically when you're assembling that team, there's considerations. When you look at, at tr interacting with them, uh, it, diverse doesn't just mean different types of people, different kinds of ideas. It also means in how you interact with them. You need to be nimble. Okay, so I'm not talking about preferential treatment. I'm talking about doing what you need to do to maximize that person's enjoyment and performance. Okay, so I mean, you know, I could I could have cut this thing off in 10 seconds and just said, well, I could just quote a system, the thing, and just pluck, you know, X number of people that I need. But I don't, I, I think that's very short-sighted, and I also don't think that that is to the spirit of what you really are looking for. Diversity comes in all kinds, from all kinds of different directions, and it, it's not just, you know, we need a diverse group of people. There's diversity in how we're going to think, how we're going to create, how we're going to innovate, and all that stuff too. I mean, I go on all day about this one. So, um, actually, you know what, um, Kara, uh, okay, we got an open slot on the leadership uh, thing. We're, for those of you that are in the leadership program, you're going to love what's coming up because in, uh, in, in May, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm rolling on how I put together a talk so a talk of any kind, how you'd write a book, how you'd write a white paper, how you'd put together a job interview answer, how you'd make a speech, a presentation, how I come to the shows when I teach you each week, if it's not a Q&A like this, what are the iterations, the seven sweeps I go through to make sure that I have what I need, it's, it's as you know, optimized, everything's included, it's as succinct as possible, it has the right examples, it has the right emotion, it has the right call to action, it has all these things. So you go through all that. That is May 21st, and then June, actually I'm not going to get all these right, is I think hiring, and then July I think is building the corporate culture. Maybe we can do diversity or something in August, or maybe we can roll that into July. To July. Uh, we got a lot of great stuff coming in that, in that program. And if I got any of my lifetime leaders out there, 
uh, the orbiting group that we are going to name. We're meeting on May 7th, and I need you guys to fill in all that information that we requested from you for the for the 30 of you that are in that high-level coaching group uh, that, that I really can't wait to get started. It's going to be a ton of fun. So if, if any of you are out there, kudos to you guys. All right, I hope that helped. Bob, great to see you. And Wayne's email, always a treat. Uh, Wayne, I'm not sure what you're asking uh, specifically. I mean, I understand work from home versus in office. What's the best way to handle the work from home versus office when companies are still trying to figure out how they will go forward? What I don't know is what is it that you want to happen? Uh, so this is an interesting thing. You, you always want to obviously determine your tactic based on what your goal is. If my goal is I would like a work from home uh, opportunity... I'd tell you to do one thing. If your goal is to get a job with a great company, I would tell you to handle it differently. So I, I wish I wish I could, I wish I, I mean, I, I would have to go through all the scenarios of what I would tell you here. But ultimately, if you are open, then I would jump on the fact, as I was communicating in the screen, I am happy to work in any kind of environment in whatever format, whether that's at home, in the office, or a blend. I'm happy to travel. I'm happy to do this that you need to be successful. That's one route. The other route is I'm open to whatever uh, you know the company feels is best. That's another route where you're you know you're a little less aggressive about it. Um, and then if if you need a work from home situation, I would haggle that out at the end. Like there's so many different scenarios here. I wish I had a little bit more to go on, but I hope I hope that gets you scooted in the right direction. Tony P from Dunedin, buddy. Hey. All my friends are going to Clearwater without me. Uh, we're, my wife is beside herself because they're all visiting our favorite spot right down the block from you. We'll be there soon, my man. Um, here we go. Here's something that um, near my How to Get Andy's ebook Ace Your Job Interview. So here's, here's what I would suggest. The easiest and best thing you can do is just grab this. Um, the Ace Your Job interview booklet, which is the 14 best questions I think an employer can ask you, the 43 variations of those 14 questions, what they are looking for, and the very best responses is in here. It's all, it's, it's all in here in more detail. Uh, it's the silver bullet uh, chapter, and I go through everything. Uh, it starts on if you have it already. It's on. It actually, lo and behold, is on is on page. Can you see that? Hang on. Can I? How's that? Is that work? I don't know. Is it focusing? Dang. There we go. Get in there. That dang autofocus. But my silver bullet interview chapter, page forty three. You can head there, and it, and and you can grab it. And I think we give a, a packaged up booklet. Uh, when you watch Three Keys to Ace Any Job Interview is a webinar that I put out in like 2017. I think there might be a 2018 version of it. It's a few years old. It still applies. It will apply for the rest of your life. So I hope uh, hope that helps. And how are we doing on time? 12-12. Okay. Uh, folks, and wait. Victor, hey to you. 73 degrees in Seattle. Emir, Robert Peterson, Faith, hey to you. Vanessa, Uzoma, Scott, my boot campers. Oh my God, Tom Phillips, look at you guys. I never get down here, uh, but I, I gotta get running. But remember, folks, the boss hunting Bible is so awesome. Uh, if you are signed up for the mini camp, let me see if I got this. Here we go. The boss hunting Bible has got everything you need to know about boss hunting. So it's not just those free templates that I give you out on the internets that you can get. All your questions answered, what to say, all the responses, the things we went through. This is for either folks in the job search coaching program, the boot known as the boot camp, or uh, folks that are in the in the VIP members and all of that stuff is available right now. So sign up for the mini camp if you're not sure you want to be a VIP. That's okay. You still come and watch it free on my YouTube channel. Uh, we got slides for everything. It's very detailed. I'm going like, I mean, we're taking a dive. It's it's 
It's really, really good. But VIPs will have workbooks, you'll have the slides, you'll have the Bible, and you got the packaged in the system for you it, for 47 bucks. It's, it's a great, great deal. It really is. I hope you join me. And if you do want to get to, to jump into the job search coaching program, the boot camp, as we call it, we will give you $100 off if you email us at support at milewalk.com. And Kara will take care of you, and she's, she's on that stuff. Uh, believe me, she wants to get you in the program. I want to get you in the program and support you. We obviously have to collect a little money. Otherwise, we don't even get to do these things for free or, or on a premium basis. So you guys, as always, great 75 minutes. For the 175 of you that are still here, God love you guys. One person, one simple share. You know I cried for you guys today. Come on. You got you to gotta help others. You got to. I know it. I know you're, you're, we're all worried about ourselves. But... It just feels great to help somebody. It really does. And you just don't know. Your thoughts and words and actions echo in places you will never visit. But I'm telling you, good stuff happens when you do good things. All right. You guys, be good. I got to get out of here. I'll see you. See you next week.